We can start, man. I can't see anybody else. You're going first, ma'am. They'll come on screen. Good morning and welcome to the Hindu Education Plus webinar under the Career Counseling Series. Today's topic is three things you must know before selecting computer science engineering after 12th standard. The webinar is presented by Calvium, which is a Coimbatore-based on-campus college that offers four-year liberal engineering program in computer science. With the engineering counseling sessions set to begin in Tamil Nadu, it is from August 25th, there are thousands of students and their anxious parents wanting and waiting to get a seat in a reputed college that they believe would ensure a sunshine life for the child. The industry experts who will join us in today's discussion will tell us about how to choose the right college for software engineering courses. The computer science programs have a lot of relevance and scope but unfortunately, the students who graduate each year do not seem to be employable enough as per the AICTE statistics. They are found lacking in hands-on experiences and skill set that is actually required in a workplace. The corporates that hire them, the corporates that hire them, they bear the brunt of the students' lack of exposure in colleges. To know how do we redeem the situation, I would first like to invite Mr. Deepak Venugopal. Mr. Deepak Venugopal is part of Calvium's founding team, a marketing veteran and non-practicing engineer. Mr. Deepak is a BTEC from Gindi Engineering College and MBA in International Business from Indian Institute of Foreign Trade, Delhi. Prior to Calvium, he was the marketing head for KFC's Greater Asia Business based out of Singapore. He will give a presentation to explain why our traditional engineering courses need an overhaul and what should be the criteria for choosing a good college and program that prepares you for a head first in the industry. So a very warm welcome to you, Mr. Deepak, and it is over to you for the presentation. Thank you so much, Soma. Uh, and uh, thank you for joining us today morning. Uh, warm welcome to the other panelists and a big welcome to all the parents and kids who are out there, I know it, these are anxious times after 12th standard. Uh, in fact, I am taken back to my own days uh, after finishing 12th and waiting for counseling. 
those days we used to have an entrance exam on top of the 12th standard. So it used to be more complicated, you know, calculating your cutoffs and figuring out where you have to be. Uh, and I think the anxiety remains the same even today, even though the process is far more imp improved. So, uh, so today we are here to discuss uh, three things you must know. I guess you all of the ones you are here are very keen about computer science and engineering after 12th standard. So uh, the idea is to educate you and share our experiences from the, from the market, from the business, having been in the field for a long time to see what can be done uh, and how you must go about it. So to start with, uh, if, I, uh, if I look at like now, now all of you have finished 12th standard and if I see the top worries for, for parents and kids alike, it would be mostly cutoffs, right? You would be calculating your cutoffs, seeing what courses or what colleges that, that can give you, right? Comparing with what previous year's cutoffs led to and what are the good chances? What should I take? How should I compromise? Is college more important or course more important? All sorts of troubles, right? When we have these options, which are not clear. So uh, what we try to put together is give you a simple yardstick to compare uh, how to go about choosing your colleges. I guess most of us, some of us are fortunate to have great cutoffs and uh, be in a position to choose whatever we want. And sometimes that is not a great boon instead also, right? Because then you have more choices to make and that's more confusing sometimes. So probably what we give you today is going to help you make that decision uh, wisely, especially if you want to have a career in computer science. Now, uh, if I talk about computer science or software, I think uh, one thing is very clear. If you look at the past results in terms of top pay placements and top offers, typically we see that the best offers seem to be coming from software or IT. Uh, and that's that's been, a, been the truth for a while now. So when sometimes parents have these questions that, you know, uh, computer, how much scope does computer science engineering have for the future? Uh, in the program, the scope and all they ask. But if I, if I look at it from that point of view, I think computer science engineering has a lot of scope. Uh, and it is definitely uh, vindicated by the packages that some, some of the kids seem to be getting. And these are the ones that make the headline. But even if I look at generally the future scope as well, yeah, you know, the, uh, we see that computer science jobs are going to be increasing. And uh, as a sector, uh, software uh, engineering jobs look to be growing way, way more than uh, other jobs or other sectors. So definitely this is, this is probably a discipline for the future and uh, has a lot of scope. So that's great, right? That's great news. Something that has so much scope. Uh, the world, uh, according to certain studies, the world needs some 45 million software engineers. About 8 lakh engineers pass uh, uh, every year in India, many of them being computer science engineers. Demand is greater than supply. So all is great, isn't it? So all you need to do is just enroll yourself to any computer science engineering course and, uh, and the future is set. That's what one would like to believe. But unfortunately, the truth is a little different. If you look... Uh, this is something called stubborn unemployability. If you look at uh, a lot of white papers and reports, the national employability reports of 2019, you'll find that as per the industry, only 16% of graduates who pass uh, engineering or computer science engineering are employable in IT services, right? And less than 4% are employable in product roles. So when I say product roles, it is for making products like Adobe, Flipkart, like these product companies for those roles, less than 4% uh, uh, students who pass out are uh, eligible. So what does that mean? How does that square off with, uh, with great placements? So the truth is actually that many of these kids are not employable right away. They have to undergo a significant amount of placement, training, coaching, boot camps before they are able to get placed and even after placement there is a long wait to be trained before they are productive so that hampers the growth the career growth the career start that they would expect after finishing engineering and uh, that's unfortunately the truth and uh, we have a few panelists so probably we can get them in at this point and discuss how they find this problem in their own organization so over to you Soma just to have a quick chat around this. Yeah, right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deepak. So I will now quickly introduce our two panelists for today's session. Uh, Mr. Abhilash Nair, he's the APAC recruitment leader for tech hiring at Google. He has a master's in management from Indian Institute of Management, Kodikot. He majored in human resources, operations and marketing. In the past, Mr. Nair has worked in areas of HR business partnering, talent acquisition, HR consulting, controls and compliance, and HR operations and delivery. 
Mr. Amar Prabhu is a tech entrepreneur with experience in building businesses from scratch, combining technical expertise, product design, business strategy, and organization design and management. He has been a part of small bootstrapped teams to large specialized teams, building cutting edge products in enterprise software, consumer, internet financial systems, logistics, and mechatronics. Mr. Amar Prabhu is currently the Vice President of Rupeek, an asset-backed digital lending fintech startup. So welcome uh, to both our panelists. So we will kind of, we have seen part of Mr. Deepak's presentation and uh, he has told that he has another second half of his presentation remaining, which will take the discussion deeper. So let us first begin with what we have seen so far uh, about this employability factor, which you highlighted in your last slide. So I would like to ask both Mr. Abhilash and Mr. Amar to begin with, because you're also into recruitments. Why do you think computer science engineering is so relevant in job market, but irrelevant as a course that is followed in most of our colleges today? So Mr. Amar, would you like to take it first? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Soma, for the kind introduction. And uh, thanks, Deepak, for putting up whatever you said in terms of statistics. Um, in terms of just the numbers that Deepak presented, they're absolutely true. If you could go back, I would just like to highlight those numbers before I start talking, right? Um, we are talking about 16%, uh, probably the numbers are uh, going to be lower when you raise the bar, right? They're talking about all the companies put together, it is 16%. If you wanna get into the best companies out there which are building world-class products, then the employability score is going to get lower. Right, and especially more so when it comes to product books. Um, now, going back to your original question, Soma, in terms of what is the scope and why students should be looking at computer science uh, or or engineering as a discipline, as something that they should definitely consider uh, when when they're looking at their future employability, so on and so forth. Uh, the world is going digital, right? Uh, the short answer would be the world is going digital. It has never been a better time to become an engineer. People are innovating on all fronts and everything is going digital. Uh, by that, I mean customer web services, all the services which are delivered are going to you know, uh, be delivered by an app or via the internet as a distribution mechanism. It has already been that way for a long time, right? Uh, anybody who wants to build something new, they're going to look at internet as the cha uh, channel for uh, distributing the product. So it is, it is going to be one of uh, the de facto means. And you have all these new things coming up. For example, vehicles are going electric. You know, uh, there, is, there is artificial intelligence and data as a work stream. So software is eating up the world. This is something that people like to say. There is no dearth of demand for software engineers. And the best engineers are going to disproportionately get, uh, you know, packages, demand for their... Uh, time, so on and so forth. So yeah, the, the numbers support what Mr. Deepak uh, is trying to say. As for the disconnect between what a traditional course offers versus what the industry expects, of course, we want people who can be hands-on as early as possible. So if I recruit somebody, what I would expect that person to do is within a span of say a couple of months, and, and that's like really stretching it. The younger the company, they will probably want this to be a couple of weeks, right? So I would want somebody to be productive as soon as possible. And in order to do that, uh, the more that they have been hands-on or they've been experimenting or they've done some internship or they have had hands-on experience, the better likelihood that they will become a better employee sooner. So, uh, th there is a massive disconnect between what the traditional academia offers versus what is expected in the industry. So academia, they generally uh, take a long cycle in order to approve what gets taught in colleges. And by the time it trickles down, it is probably already outdated in terms of what the industry uses. Uh, so I'll, I'll keep it short. Just to summarize, three reasons. One, there is massive scope. Second, the world is going digital. Third, there is a disconnect between what the traditional academy offers and what the industry expects. 
I, I hope that is helpful. If you can move slides and then. Yeah, I would like to bring Abhilash Nair, uh, if he would like to add to this point. Yes, uh, thank you, Soma. And um, firstly, my apologies. I'm, I'm actually out and I'm on mobile network. So I'm, I'm, my video is not very good. So I've kept that off so that the audio is fine. So um, let me, uh, I, I think I, I pretty much agree with whatever I've heard uh, Deepak and Amar say. A few things that I want to add is, um, if anything, in the last two to three years with the whole pandemic and COVID impact, etc., what we have seen, how technology can play a role in making our lives normal to some extent. Um, I think the way everybody went remote working, uh, it wouldn't have been possible without technology. Um, you know, uh, so the very fact that technology is so ingrained into our lives uh, that I see a career in engineering and computer science as an evergreen field going forward. Uh, it certainly has a lot of options. It certainly provides opportunities for these engineers or for these students who graduate as computer science engineers, not necessarily in just the top product companies, but in every other company, in every other phase of life that they will be given opportunities. So I think uh, if you are deciding after your 12th grade, whether if you have decided once that you want to be an engineer and you're deciding on what stream, computer science would be a great uh, stream to consider because it, it is evergreen, it has opportunities and, uh, you know, it will always give you, you know, keep you uh, challenged as some, you know, to do, uh, because there's always so much learning, uh, you know, what you, what you knew two years ago is, is obsolete in two years time. So that's the other part of it keeps you challenged, keeps you interested. So that's one. The second part is that, um, and, you know, um, we, we spoke a little about employability and all of that, right? Uh, I think it, it requires for our colleges also and uh, for our individual for the students also as they get into you know maybe the third year or the fourth year of college to to really spend time to get corporate ready uh, to get ready for uh, how do, how do i make myself more um, you know um, a better fitment into the into the corporate world because so far their exposure has always been academics it's all been academia it's been theoretical and i know they all you know you will undergo some internships as part of it consider the internship as a very serious first step towards considering uh, the corporate life and get a feel and taste of how things do and then spend and spend that time and effort to get yourself ready uh, for these jobs so that your employability goes up uh, these are the two points that i would really like to uh, say right now uh, thanks Right. So I remember during the pre-discussion, we were also saying that those figures of 16% unemployability and all that, I'm sorry, employability is all kind of liberal, quite far too liberal, perhaps. So then uh, when we are talking to our students, what can we tell them? Does that mean that getting just the degree is actually no guarantee for a good job or a well-paid job? I mean, we have to, we, we can't be dissuading them. No, So on... Yeah. Uh, and maybe Mr. Deepak can look at it like because the academia, the conventional uh, degree, engineering degree programs, perhaps they really need an overhaul. Definitely they do. But the point is this, it is required. It is that base. It is that foundation. And I'll let Deepak, uh, you know, chime into that one. But engineering courses will give you that basic a uh, strong foundation which is required but that's just not enough you need something more and that more is what needs to be figured out and needs to be uh, you know uh, learned at the right time just before you are you uh, you know just before you're ready for your placements and that's what takes your employed employability up so um, you definitely need the courses you need the theoretical the engineering courses are fantastic and in, in our country if anything look at the uh, the engineers globally they're some of the brightest minds have gone from india so our academic system is strong but we need that plus plus on top of this basic uh, you know requirement so deepak go ahead Absolutely. No, I think you made the point there, Abhilash. And uh, so I, I would also look at it in two ways uh, uh, to your question, Soma. One is that uh, I agree with Abhilash. Yes, the engineering provides you a strong base, uh, which is important. And that is great. Uh, so, and we have, we have made great strides in this place. And Indian engineers are there across the world globally doing very well. But that said, also what is happening, the other side is that this is also a discipline that is changing very fast. You heard uh, Amar and Abhilash say, talk about that as well. Technology changes very fast. So how fast uh, are we moving with that? That is one point to remember. And the other thing is also what we see and what we celebrate are 
sometimes exceptions to the rule, right? These are the super performers, the outliers. Now, what happens overall to every average engineer probably may not be the same story, right? So how do we ensure that we don't fall in the average bracket? And how do we ensure that we go in the top end of the bracket? That's also something for us to consider when we choose our course. Right. So when you are actually offering a job to a computer engineering graduate, both Mr. Amar and Mr. Abhilash, what are those exact specifications you search for in a prospective candidate? Uh, sure, uh, I'll go first then. Um, when you're looking at a computer science graduate or any engineer for that matter, um, for uh, recruitment to a startup, I'll, I'll talk about startups, not necessarily big companies. I think Abhilash can chime in on say what big companies like Google look for. There'll be similarities, but there'll be some uh, differences as well. So yeah. I'll focus on startups. Uh, what we focus on is past work. Uh, are they ready to be integrated into a fast paced environment? Because we are not going to give them the luxury of uh, there's some disturbance somewhere. Yeah. Um, can can they go on mute? Yeah, where was I? Uh, so what I was trying to say was uh, past work, uh, which is how prepared are they to be integrated into a fast-paced work environment? Uh, so we often have tight deadlines and we need to ship products faster. That's one of the defining characteristics of what a startup does. We have to uh, deliver things faster we are okay with experimenting and we are okay with, you know, uh, breaking certain things, but we definitely want to move fast. We want to validate if the market wants the product that we want to sell. And because of that, uh, the students uh, with past experience are preferred and given a lot of weightage. What I mean by past experience is sometimes we look for competitive programming experience. Uh, that means that they have competed on platforms there are plenty of competitive platforms out there. So they have competed on those platforms and they have earned credentials on those platforms, which certify that if I were to pair them with someone who already has experience, they can probably pick up in a few weeks, not a few months, right? So this is something that we look for. The other thing that we look for is, do they have genuine experience shipping products already? While it might be a very steep ask, uh, it is becoming a norm for students in uh, some colleges, if not all colleges, who have participated in hackathons or contributed to open source projects or even taken up, uh, you know, very deeply integrated internships where they work with, uh, you know, full-time engineers side by side. They learn a lot in terms of what it takes to build a full-fledged product. Uh, full stack engineer is a very sought after and highly coveted position to fill, uh, which means that they can build, uh, you know, the UI. So when you're looking at, let's say, the presentation that Deepak is showing on a Google document, there is a front end, there is a back end system which is powering it. So we look for people who have built these systems before. So long story short, uh, uh, we are we are not just looking for the graduates and uh, what colleges they come from. Definitely a uh, prior experience in terms of doing something, even if it is not uh, big enough, we, we definitely prefer people who have had some experience building web-based applications. And this varies. If we are looking for data engineers, we look for people uh, who have some experience in doing data engineering. It could be uh, you know, any other field. It could be DevOps, it could be uh, you know, data science. We, we recruit a lot of engineers every year. So anyone with prior experience in any of these things, front-end, back-end, uh, data engineering, data science, DevOps, any of these is very, very uh, sought after. Right. Uh, Mr. Abhilash, would you like to add to that? Sure. So I can uh, certainly... Um... Uh, you know, throw in a view of what maybe top product companies look for and stuff. So um, I would break this down into three separate areas. Let me, let me talk about Google. Like when we look to hire people, what do we look for? So uh, the first part is what we call role related knowledge. What that means is how well do you know the job that you're applying for? 
the role that you're going to do. So if it's a software engineer job, we would spend time to understand how well can you code, uh, how good is your uh, system thinking, system design, and all of those things. So that's all kind of comes into what we call role-related knowledge. Another aspect that we look at, um, uh, at Google specifically, is, um, see, problem solving is in the DNA of uh, uh, every Googler. And uh, a lot of our products have come up from a need to solve a problem. So for us, it's very important that the people we are hiring have a, a strong cognitive ability to solve problems. So, uh, you know, we, we do evaluate how do they go about uh, understanding a problem, root, understanding the root cause, how do you put up a solution, how do you implement that solution, and how do you communicate effectively? Uh, and then, of course, the third part, another part which we look at is, you know, around leadership and, and uh, you know, a cultural fit. How do, how do people fit into that kind of an environment, teamwork, and things like that? So these are the different aspects that would go into uh, you know, uh, evaluation, uh, specifically uh, when we are hiring uh, folks uh, just out of college as, as what we call new grads to see how much they would fit into our culture and stuff. So that uh, a, a little different from what Amar said, uh, but, you know, this is a more, uh, a startup is, is more evolving and, uh, you know, these, uh, our organizations are more established. So that probably makes the slight difference in the way we evaluate our talent. But I think the fundamental uh, uh, criteria are similar. We are looking for strong, bright engineers. Thank you. So I would like to bring in Dr. Deepak at this stage because, you know, like, again, he was mentioning that how a lot of things that are taught in the engineering courses, the computer science programs are quite redundant. And as you mentioned that, you know, this cognitive ability, the ability to communicate better, the leadership qualities, those elements are perhaps not integrated into our courses. So, Mr. Deepak, would you like to throw some light on how you know we can actually, um, as we said, overhaul the traditional uh, computer engineering courses? Um, I mean, yeah, there, there is a lot of ways we can do that. In fact, uh, when 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 Amar and uh, uh, Abhilash were speaking, in fact, it it just reminded me of this thing, right? Uh, it's almost like a meme. They say that you know what do you need for a for getting a good job? It's experience, and what do you need for experience is a good job. So it's it's kind of a vicious loop that goes on. And uh, we are trying to break that loop in a way with Calvium. Now, uh, yes, we have a lot of thoughts on that. Uh, in fact, uh, that is something that we'd like to talk about. One on a, on a simple way, it is how do we make them very, very real world ready, right? Like get them out of just the theoretical knowledge part, which is which is important, but that's not sufficient, and and make them real world ready. Uh, that's that's essentially what we are trying to do at Calvium. And uh, not just us, there are many other colleges who have similar minds and. What we are, what we have today for the parents and kids is a kind of a, a yardstick. You, they can use these yardsticks to evaluate their own favorite colleges and see how well they fare on these yardsticks. So probably we can pick that up as we start discussing further in this. Uh, so I've got a few slides. Maybe I can explain them. With wow. that. Please go ahead because we're already midway. So I think you could show us the second part of this. Absolutely. So we've got a small checklist uh, for uh, what you should look for in a computer engineering course or your favorite or your dream college. Now, before we get into that, can I request the, the, the uh, team to just flash the first uh, poll? So before we get into this uh, details, maybe the parents and kids around there can answer this first poll and then we can pick up from there. Do we have sufficient? Uh, we'll give another five seconds for all participants to make their choice and then we can move ahead. Thank you. Thank you for participating in the poll. So here's our checklist. So when you want to enroll for a computer science engineering program. So, so our checklist is, these are the three things that you need to look for, right? So the number one thing is to look for a holistic curriculum, uh, industry relevant program. And does that course and college provide you hands-on experience? I'll explain this in a, in a bit now. So what do we mean by holistic curriculum? 
so a holistic curriculum is not just the theory is not just the subjects but it's kind of the the whole pedagogy the whole way how teaching is done that sets you up for the real world right so it's not just about getting good marks and grades but how closely related to the real world your curriculum is so for instance uh, do we still have irrelevant legacy courses and have we have we replaced them with the best of liberal education which is useful for the modern software workplace what i mean by that is if you look at a lot of engineering courses today uh, we carry a lot of legacy uh, many many years ago engineering was a five year program where kids after puc joined engineering and uh, it was a generic the first year used to be equivalent to the 12th standard today where they were taught a little bit from all sub all fields and then they got to choose what field they wanted to specialize in and then four years of that happened that doesn't happen anymore right we decide which course we want to join which specialization we want to take right after 12th standard and a lot of that puc is brought into the 12th standard syllabus but our engineering courses still have these legacy courses like you know basic organic chemistry or or uh, machine shop or welding which may not be very very relevant for a computer science engineer right and uh, and what this does is that it also takes a lot of important time and effort from your engineering course so if i can replace these courses with more relevant modern courses because today as things are changing at such a fast pace just learning the latest technology is probably not enough we need to also learn about learning right how do i learn quickly critical thinking problem solving communication skills like uh, what they were mentioning these are important and we have to learn these formally and we can't leave these to the students own capabilities or them to discover after they've joined uh, for a job so that's important we we should make sure does your college have these things in place do they have uh, a mix of liberal uh, arts in in their course and the second thing is also the teaching methods while the syllabus is one thing uh, most universities most colleges even the especially the old ones sometimes uh, what they do is they have outdated teaching methods uh, professors who probably in the have have had a success in teaching things in one way but uh, but things have changed what i mean by that is especially for a skill like coding uh, learning on a notebook or paper or a chalkboard is probably not the most optimum way to learn coding coding is best learned uh while you while you code and build things yourself right on a device on a laptop while you learn and uh, and these days many colleges haven't ad adopted to this uh, this uh, this way of learning so learning is still by uh, we call it chalk and talk basically a big board a professor and a huge uh, a theater like classroom with 100 students sitting there and listening to a lecture de delivered one way versus uh, having a two way conversation in small groups and learning by doing so is the is the teaching method up to date is something we have to ask ourselves and uh, finally how well does the curriculum help in kindling curiosity so the curriculum is some somebody had said that curriculum is not about covering a syllabus but uh, enabling the uh, student to discover the syllabus right so how much uh, how much how much curiosity does it kindle do we have a host of electives where the where, where students can explore what they are interested in you know sometimes they think they are interested in something can they explore find if that is really their calling or change things and and gather as much as possible so instead of just covering a set st stuff how much do we allow kids to discover uh, their interest so these are three things on the curriculum that are very important and something which with kalviam we are bringing in, into the world so very quickly about kalviam how we do things is that our syllabus is very different uh, we'll we'll show you a glance of that as we end uh, where we have a lot of liberal arts and uh, liberal thinking brought into this thing like problem solving communication we also pay a lot of attention on skilling and we also pay a lot of attention on how we are teaching kids so kids are taught in groups of 20 not in huge theater like classrooms but small groups uh, with devices by experts so that brings me to the next step so how 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 do we make the course industry relevant so number one is mentorship by industry uh, industry professional so it's all the course that is delivered is not purely done by academicians but we also need to have industry professionals uh, telling students how what they're learning is actually applied in the real world out there right so that that really helps to be uh, employment ready when you pass out right so that's something we deliver at kalviam again we have mentors around uh, the clock on campus who give one on one mentorship this is not just uh, meeting somebody for 20 minutes in a quarter it's it's somebody who is there with you on campus there to clarify doubts and help you solve problems uh, there's also deep work integration so with uh, with kalviam the way we, we see it is that 
we feel that internships alone aren't sufficient they are necessary but they are not sufficient so what if we had an engineering program where you where work is deeply integrated into the syllabus where you work as part of your learning right not not a summer time thing that you do for some time just to while off time it's more like uh, what if you got credits for that what if you were evaluated basis your work as well as your studies uh, so that's something that we are, we are looking at it we are calling it the am pm approach where you study in the morning uh, where you do classes in the morning and then you work in top companies top product and software companies and uh, and and learn to apply what you have studied uh, while building things there so that's that's deep work integration and also the course should be made with inputs from industry cxos and hiring managers not just developed in a by bureaucrats in a meeting room somewhere but also listen deeply to what the industry requires who are so that is how you create something which is industry relevant so see if if your college gives you this and finally how do you get hands on experience right so uh, the where just knowing things is not enough you have you actually learn things deeply by doing them yourselves so one way to do that is so what happens today in classes is because everything is measured by the grades at the end of the uh, semester uh, students are actually competing with each other uh, over grades but that's not how work happens in the workplace at all right like people are not competing to solve a problem they have to collaborate and take pieces and and work as a team to solve problem so how do we how do we inculcate that into the students right from day one right they don't carry on these habits of being competitive and as such we are a very competitive country all 12 years of school we are always competing with our classmates right and we always look to have the correct answer it's not about the right answer but the best answer that you can create from the from your friends right along with them so we focus uh, so what calvium does is they focus on we focus on projects uh, where teams where students work together in creating uh, uh, projects building products and uh, doing assignments so that's something we focus on and also that is there are there also is continuous ongoing internships so uh, like i told you uh, work is so deeply integrated that the internships are ongoing where you have an opportunity not just to contribute in a small way at a company but actually see that your work is taken through to completion and it finally faces the con consumer you actually ship a product right so long term internships are important for that so that you can see your work through and see how it actually finally takes shape in an end product uh and and finally uh, like they were mentioning in the panel before discussion before it's important to also have this extracurricular activities now typically when it comes to college life extracurricular activities are typically associated with sports and cultural events and things like that which are important but in addition to that uh, we also focus on things like hackathons and competitive programming clubs which tell which teach you a little more than just academic and industry level uh, understanding but also help you get a flavor get more interest uh, on on how to improve uh, on on your designated subject so these are three things that are supremely important just to summarize again we need holistic curriculums industry relevance and hands on experience and just to compare how a kalvi program how a liberal engineering approach for that matter looks like versus a regular engineering program typically in a regular engineering program you have academic courses through the first 3 and a half years and then your final year or the final semester is about a project and uh, and it's mostly optional sometimes compulsory where you have summer internships in middle of the years right that's how regular engineering programs go but a liberal engineering engineering approach does have academic courses but they only have the essential ones what we do is that we also on top of that have skilling programs in the beginning so that you are given the basic skills so that you can start working from your second year onwards so you have integrated work and you have certain foundational liberal courses which help you as a person help you as a, a team member how to do well how help you as a leader a future leader in understanding things uh, practically so that in a nutshell it's a little bit of a long chat that i've had but this is probably your cheat sheet or your checklist that you need to have and see if your favorite college provides that so uh, uh thank you mr deepak uh, so is that uh, do we have any more slides from you otherwise i'll also start taking questions now yes uh, so this is this is the key thing uh, what we have after this is a uh, is the benefits that such an such a thing provides right so a benefit of a liberal approach what we have uh, is uh, if you if you join a place like calvium uh at the end of the first year you get 
placed because we are a deeply work integrated program. So your placements are assured at the end of first year. You get internships, paid internships with a minimum stipend of 15,000 per month and where you can earn up to 8 lakhs. Uh, the money is not that important. The, the reason to put this money here is to say that these are serious work integration. This is where you do real work, right? This is, uh, it is deep work where you work uh, where you work with these companies in a almost like a full-time basis, which gives you that badge of experience that Amar was talking about. So when you graduate, you already have something like a three-year work experience, right? Uh, as you graduate, and which makes you bag a better final placement. Right? You're, you're treated as an experienced person than a fresher, and and you you can get plum pay packages. So that's the benefits of a liberal approach. And back to you, Soma. Yeah, right. So now uh, we have heard what Calvium is offering to Mr. Deepak. So I would like to, uh, like our industry experts, to tell us with your uh, uh, years of experience with the startups or in an established company, if you happen to be on the academic committee of, say, a computer science program, what is that first thing you would strike off? And in terms of exposure, what is that you, you would like to include in the curriculum? Um, I'll, I'll go first. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not about uh, striking things off, right? Uh, I, I would say that um, it's, it's the nature of how you teach what is being taught. Um, for example, if I were to talk about networking and packets and uh, you know stuff like that, uh, it, it may not find a great audience. Whereas if I talk about, hey, this is Zoom, you're watching you know, video being streamed from five different corners of the country and you know, it is being aggregated in a server in Singapore and then it is coming back to your respective screens and all of it is happening in real time. And I kind of try to explain how all of this happens. And if I, you know, uh, get you to build something which, which may not be as detailed, but en enables you to visualize and see for yourself, uh, which one do you think would, would have a better impact in terms of retention, in terms of learning, in terms of applying what they've learned to some other problem? Uh, it, it's obvious that it's probably the hands-on approach, right? So, I don't think we have to take stuff away. It's more about what can you repurpose and how do you present it and how do you integrate it into their daily learning, right? Uh, so I wouldn't say, uh, you know, things are dramatically wrong in terms of the content, right? I would, I would rather say that it's more about how it is being kind of uh, force-fed from the top. Uh, most people do it for credits or, hey, I have the end semester exam and I need to clear it so that I can get my degree and get out of here, right? Uh, so it's, it's about an attitudinal shift towards making it more interesting, making it, uh, you know, better suited for them to apply it in the long term. Uh, you can just extrapolate what I said to everything else. It could be data structures, it could be algorithms, it could be uh, you know, uh, doing system design, probability, uh, everything that we have learned in engineering can be applied in a certain problem, in a certain context. It is just that we focus on outcomes, basis, marks, and uh, whatever, rather than typical uh, end outcomes, which will probably involve the things that Deepak spoke about, right? You will need to work with other people. You will need to uh, apply yourself in terms of problem solving, you will need to uh, be a little bit more hands-on uh, where it doesn't necessarily go back to reading a book. <laughs> There's no guide to, you know, building a product which somebody is asking you to build, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the experience, the uh, hands-on approach, the collaboration which Deepak is talking about is definitely something that I would probably reimagine uh, the traditional CS course as. So yeah, yeah, I, I hope what I talked about in terms of Zoom being an example for networking made sense. Yeah, yeah. No, I asked this because, you know, like we are still handholding our students in a very yeah. textbookish uh, culture and environment. So, um, Mr. Abhilash, would you like to add to this? Is Mr. Abhilash there with us? 
uh, i don't think uh, he's uh, you know responding uh, so it would be better if, uh, you know we we move ahead okay so then i'll uh, take a couple of questions now yeah. uh, somebody wants to know is computer science and coding hard for students who did not study computer science in school and so i'll i'll take that and jump on it because uh, i'm not a cs graduate by the way uh, and i definitely did not uh, you know study computer science formally uh, i'm a self taught largely self taught hands on engineer and uh, it's it's not that hard you need you definitely need the knack for it uh you definitely need the curiosity to you know figure uh, things out you need a little bit of persistence so that when things don't work out you you try something different and eventually it works out uh all of that applies whether you are a you know first time beginner coder who is just you know starting to write code for the first time or whether you are an you know 10 year 15 year uh, experienced person debugging something in production right the same things apply uh, you need to be persistent you need to be curious you need to be open minded uh, so that you can figure out what this uh, thing is actually doing uh, and you definitely need a knack for it and an attitude to uh, problem solve uh, so if i have to go back to the basics uh, some of it is going to be if you're good at math you might be good at uh, coding right but it's not always true you might be bad at math and you can still be uh, good at coding but i'm saying that there is a strong correlation there uh if you are good with puzzles and problem solving uh, that also has a very strong uh, correlation and uh, if you ask me uh, there is there is absolutely no formal requirement that you need to be trained uh, in in any uh, computer science discipline uh, before picking up a computer science course in fact your first year of study in every engineering college is going to be foundational they're going to teach you uh, this is this is how uh, microchips work this is how operating systems work this is how uh, coding happens this is how systems work so everything that you need in order to uh, become a good uh, software engineer will be taught in those foundational courses so you will be uh, you know on par with peers who have studied it before they might have the advantage of knowing things uh, beforehand but it's not a significant advantage mm -hmm. so krishna i would like to add to that a bit uh, so much if you don't mind uh, that's a good point there uh, amar and in fact if you think about it uh, like at least in in tamil nadu the the criterion is mostly your 12th standard marks but many play, people would also have done given entrance exams right for say iit or or miss different universities have their own entrance tests and sometimes it strikes me that these entrance tests generally do not uh, do not test your capabilities for computer science necessarily right because your entrance test may have questions on organic chemistry engineering mechanics uh in a, in a very circuitous way yes probably that sh that shows your problem solving and logical skills but but it is too technical which kind of uh, drives away a lot of computer science aspirants away uh from from uh, so it's almost like there's a tyranny of engineering driving computer science aspirants away so uh, we we at kalvian thought about that as well deeply and so if you want to get into kalvian so we have something called the kalvinus quotient challenge so what we test is what amar was speaking about so we don't test how much you know coding but we test uh, in in very simple ways and with puzzles and very very interesting questions uh, we have data interpretation numerical skills reasoning skills communication skills uh, creative thinking so we test you for these things which are which are generic skills which everybody is supposed to have which assess uh, somebody's interest and uh, probably inherent talent uh, for software rather than how good you know what uh, chemical reacts with another chemical or how how much time it will take for the stone to roll down the slope if the incline was 45 degrees right so uh, so that's also important i guess in some way where people who are very very interested in coding and computer science they sometimes get turned away by the by the whole aura of engineering around it which sometimes could be a negative as well so uh, so this uh, this this kq challenge that we have developed is also something that we have developed over our 
uh, uh, experience of, of coaching students and also getting them placement trained and placing a roughly 40 lakhs of them. So what happens is we know that these skills are highly correlated with success in a software career. So if you do well in this test, uh, probably you, you are uh, well set for software uh, yeah. yeah, I do remember Deepak, you mentioning that how in your first semester you were taught welding and then you switch fields and <laughs> you have never ever applied it in yeah. any, uh, right. So uh, Krishna Priya is actually thanking you Deepak for the very informative slides and more than a question, she says that unfortunately not only for BTEC, even the school education needs to move in the way that you have uh, suggested the changes. I um, agree, couldn't agree more. Yeah. Uh, Vijay Kumar, um, maybe Amar, you could take this question. Mr. Vijay Kumar is saying, does asking, does computer science degree with three-year BSc and a four-year BE, are they looked at differently from the industri industry's perspective? Um, it, it depends on uh, how recruiters look at it, right? Uh, I'll, I'll give a neutral and nuanced answer. Uh, so let's say I'm a recruiter and I need to get 10 uh, good engineers on board, right? There are two ways to go about it. One is I could say that, you know what, uh, I'll get the best. And what that means is I'll just add more filters. Uh, you know, graduated from XYZ college, has uh, prior work experience, uh, you know, knows XYZ specialization, I put all that criteria, probably, you know, only 100 people meet it, but I'm I'm okay with that. And that's how I want to do my recruitment, right? That's one, one category of uh, recruiting. There's going to be the other category who says that, you know what, I want to take bets on people who have the aptitude and the hunger to learn. And I don't care about their, uh, you know, um, degree or where they graduated from, as long as they meet the criteria that I'm looking for. And those criteria are going to be something around problem solving. Do they know or do they have this skill? Uh, so if you're uh, looking at it in the short term, in the first one year after you graduate, maybe that matters. But if you extrapolate that over a period of three years, five years, your uh, place of graduation, your credentials from academics are definitely not going to matter. So uh, short term, yes. There are definitely going to be recruiters uh, who prefer a certain institution or a certain degree. In the long run, uh, definitely not the case. Uh, you have the skills, you, you're going to get picked up, you're going to be valued for it no matter what. So P. Ashok, it's like an add-on, says that if uh, if you have a computer science engineering degree, so uh, would you be given priority in, on during a campus uh, placement drive compared to the other disciplines of engineering? And maybe those other disciplines of engineering are also integrating a bit of liberal uh, engineering. Uh, of course, uh, there is there is no right or wrong answer here. It depends on the recruiter. As I said, if uh, I I need the right people, and uh, you know I'm I'm inclined to go through or give people the chance, then I'm definitely not going to look at the academic credentials. If I'm going to be a picky recruiter then uh, it might be the case. But overall, rounding off, as I uh, closed it, if you look at, if you extrapolate your career, you're, you're going to be working for uh, decades. Uh, what you're asking about is the short-term three yeah. months of your placement season, right? So don't worry about your placement season. Uh, slightly take a longer-term horizon. And in the long-term horizon, your degree definitely wouldn't uh, differentiate you, right? After your first one year in the industry, it's definitely not going to matter. Mm -hmm. Vishnu V has started learning Java and will continue to learn Kotlin in a couple of weeks after learning the Java basics. And then he's going to build upon it. So he wants you to talk about this a little more and give your inputs. Of course, uh, uh, I didn't catch the name of the... Java and Kotlin. No, no, uh, I got the question. The name of the person uh, who asked. Vishnu. Okay, Vishnu. Uh, so it's great that you're picking up Java. It's definitely a good place to start. Uh, it's also nice that you're learning Kotlin. You're probably trying to ship an Android app. Uh, this is whatever you have said in the question. Uh, what I would ask you to do is 
uh, the language that you learn doesn't matter. Try to put it in front of a user, right? Uh, ship it, uh, see if, you know, what they tell you, does it have bugs? Uh, does it, does it actually work? Right. Uh, try to ship it. Uh, the language doesn't matter. Uh, the ecosystem doesn't matter. Just put it in front of users. Uh, try to learn what it takes to debug it. Try to learn uh, what it takes to improve it. Uh, don't keep hopping between uh, different things. I would say just go a little bit deep before you switch ecosystems. Uh, both Java and Kotlin are great uh, languages or ecosystems to tap into. Uh, I'm guessing you are building an Android app. Uh, show it to other people. Don't keep it on your own laptop. Uh, show it to other people, gather feedback, fix bugs. That will teach you a lot more. So we have focused largely on undergraduate courses. Akash Karthim wants to know, is MSc integrated computer science course preferred by the industry? If you're uh, waiting. Deepak, you're... do you want to take this up? Yes. In fact, uh, yeah, this 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 will probably also answer to this whole host of questions where uh, I think the students are coming from a concern that like Akash, you, for example, or uh, and the other questions as well, that which is the best degree, right? Uh, what is the best degree to have? So you're looking at degree as a badge and saying that if I have this badge or I have this ticket, then I get entry into XYZ places. So I'm just building on what Amar said. Yes, there are certain places where they need that entry ticket, right? You have to have that degree to enter that place. Uh, but there are, but it changes. And once you have, once you get a job, that badge changes, right? That badge then becomes a, suppose I, I work in Rupik, like Amar, then that badge gets transformed into Rupik. And then they'll say, oh, you work there. You might have certain skills. It becomes Google, it becomes Microsoft, wherever you work, that badge overrides your previous badge in some sense, right? So, there is, there's always that what happens and then your, your ticket changes. So what I'm coming to say is that, yes, it, it matters to get into the first job, but after that, it's your skills, it's what you have delivered, uh, is what matters at the end of the day. Now, uh, so having said that, uh, also, I'm just also trying to put you from, make you look at, look at it from the other side. You are saying that, uh, instead of saying, what, what will I get a job if I have this? Or will I get a job if I have this? Look at, why don't you look at the things like, what are the companies? What are the type of companies which are particular about your undergraduate degree, right? What are the type of companies which are picky about only having a certain type of engineers? Uh, which are the companies which are actually looking at skills? Now, you can also make up your mind on saying that, is that the place I want to go to? Or is that even within a company, they may be recruiting for different types of roles. So is that the role that I want to go to? Where is your interest? And what is the best way to get you there? Right? Sometimes that's a better way to look at it, right? Like this is my interest and this is what I want to do. Who is offering that? And I have this skill with me and can I go to the place where they give me the best uh, uh, you know, place to perform and do uh, showcase that skills. So you can have that 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 perspective as well. So I'll just give it a little more fine uh, example, uh, more practical example. Uh, you know, specific example is to say that hey, if you're really interested in building an app, then look look for look for companies which where you will be doing that job. Right? It doesn't matter what degree you've got and see where companies what skills they're looking for and build those skills and go and take that job. Rather than saying, you know, I have this, uh, I'm okay to go anywhere. I don't mind if, if I join a call center or if I join something else, I may not use my skills, but I get a job. That's not the most optimum use of your interest. So I would say, put your interest first, see what is required to shine in that, to get a job in that and just acquire those skills. Does, does that answer? So, so if you're really interested in doing something specific or you want to explore a certain category, it doesn't matter if MSc is the job for it, go for MSc. If you require to acquire certain skills on the site, do that. Uh, if if a software job is your calling and you want to explore a host of software jobs, uh, coding jobs, back end, front end, becoming a full stack developer, probably I would recommend Calvium specifically for that. But uh, but but decide what you want to do and and acquire skills for that. Uh, is, is yeah, that because somebody is also asking about the scope of PhD in computer science and industry. I think basically what they want to know is at which degree or which level they can stop and get a good job because people are there with BSc, MSc, PhD. So there are a lot of these kind of personal questions. So would you like to, I think it will be repetitive. Um, also, what is the most important language in the current industry? Is that a technical uh, question? Yeah, um, I, would, I would like to take that up. 
uh, and uh, I think I covered this previously uh, when when people spoke about Java and Kotlin. Yeah. Um, the language doesn't matter. Communication. Uh, you can you can communicate well in any language, right? Uh, similar to that, you can you can write good apps in plenty of languages. Uh, focus on the basics. What I mean by the basics are. Uh, do you know the right syntax and the right data structures to use in order to solve a given problem? Uh, are you able to, you know, uh, let's say, understand the fundamentals of what is happening? There are there are a lot of things related to uh, technical scope. For example, if I were to execute a program, how fast will it execute? Uh, how much memory will it consume or how much resources will it consume in order to run it? So on and so forth. You need to understand those nuances, the language, uh, et cetera, so on and so forth, the ecosystem, the stack where you build, all of it keeps changing. You, you don't necessarily have to focus on uh, if I learn Java or JavaScript or C Sharp or anything else. In the industry, uh, we have seen the rise and fall of three, four different languages or ecosystems in the past decade. And uh, you know, I, I, I'm not that much experienced, if I may say so. So the languages and the ecosystem will keep evolving. Uh, what you need to focus on is, can you evolve with it? And do your fundamentals and the basics of problem solving and so on and so forth carry forward and make you better when the language or the ecosystem evolves? Uh, your academia is uh, probably going to teach you C as your first language. Uh, some people are going to focus on Python, uh, whereas some others might recommend Java. Uh, there is there is no right or wrong answer here. Pick any language, but focus on the fundamentals, and you should you should be on your merry way. Uh, so, yeah, language doesn't matter. That's the short answer. <laughs> so Ari Satar Dekar is repeatedly thumping with this question. I have to take this. He says, "What is the right way to learn coding?" Because most students quit when they are unable to think or do make mistakes in coding. Uh, mistakes in code. Okay, uh, I think it has a lot to do with uh, learn X language in thirty minutes. Kind of uh, catchy, uh, you know, YouTube titles. Uh, it's if if I were to put up the title that learn X language in hundred hours or thousand hours, nobody's going to come there, right? So the attitude has to shift where you need a little bit of persistence in order to uh, become good at something, right? Uh, so don't give up. That's probably the first uh, thing that I would like to say, which is just be persistent and you, you're bound to uh, you know, pick something up. Uh, second thing is it also has to do a lot with motivation and your peer group. Uh, what I found is you're as good as your peers. So go and find peers who are motivated and who are uh, better than you. If you stay in a peer group where uh, they don't push you to be better, then you will stagnate. Uh, so in my order of priority, first comes the persistence and the time that you uh, put in. Second would be your peer group. And the third is once again, I would just say, focus on the basics uh, and you should, you should get right on everything else. Uh, languages, ecosystems, frameworks. And by persistence, I mean keep building stuff. Um, write it, debug it. Uh, you know, you know. Don't be afraid to uh, erase everything and start from scratch. Uh, but if you keep at it, I'm sure you will become a really good programmer. Um, yeah. Um, I would like to add uh, to that, uh, Soma, if you don't mind. Uh, rightly pointed out, Amar. Uh, also, one of the reasons why I guess this question comes uh, where people feel disappointed and want to leave when they make mistakes. You know, I, I really noted that point on making mistakes and getting disappointed is that probably it's also systemic, right? When, when you're institute, even in a college, uh, to do well in college and get that grade and get that, uh, you know, medal or, or degree, you're expected to write uh, a correct answer on your paper, right? On your answer sheet. You can't make, make mistakes there, but that's not how things happen, right? When you actually do coding, when you actually make something in the real world, you will make 20 mistakes, then you will correct 20 mistakes. And that's how you learn. And finally, you ship the final product. You're, you should be evaluated on the final product you have shipped uh, rather than how you wrote the code the first time. Uh, because 
invariably it's going to be having bugs there right it is going to have mistakes so i think that whole whole thing has to shift unfortunately if you're being if the outcomes that a college judges themselves as just marks and pass percentage uh, and things like that then this is going to be the problem because you will never get it right the first time probably right uh, versus if you have the yardstick if you have the yardstick that how much how much real world ready i am how much can i actually create curiosity interest if those are the yardsticks i'm looking at then probably this question won't arise you will be more keen to make newer mistakes next time and learn more so probably there's a systemic problem there also so if you don't have the pressure to do well in an exam probably you will you will not have this problem of making a mistake uh, mr deepak this question is all for you from mr ramkumar pandian how to join calvium and what is the fee structure okay good uh, good question i think this is perfectly in my eye do you have another of those polls coming up or we are uh, done with it yeah we have a couple couple of polls uh, before we get to the polls probably i'll answer this question and take the poll so um to join calvium all you need to do is take the kq challenge so you have to go to www.calvium.com uh, apply there uh, by the application form it's a uh, it's a measly 9 uh, 1000 rupees and then you you get access to this kq challenge and if you pass the kq challenge uh, you you can get through calvium uh, one more point about kq challenge uh, is that it is not like any other entrance exam so if you see most most entrance exams be it the cat or the je many entrance exams are relative scoring entrance exams but what it means is that it doesn't care about how much exactly you scored uh the top 1% or 2% are filtered and taken in right uh, even if they are eligible or not eligible that's 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 how they score whereas uh, the kq challenge is an absolute exam absolute question so uh it tells you how good you would be uh, probably for a software career so uh, there is there is uh, if you pass this then you have all the rights to join calvi calvi uh, this year uh the fees is 1 lakh rupees per semester and uh, yeah that's uh, and is there a deadline yeah. any date you have to yes uh, because uh, we have uh, we have the 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 cohort that is currently on we are we are currently on 20th august today so this cohort ends on 31st august so you need time there are seven sections of the kq challenge each of them take uh, roughly anything between 30 minutes to 1 hour so you need 4 5 hours to actually complete this test so uh, i would recommend you apply right away today you have 10 days you can take it at your own convenience you have enough practice tests available online to do that before taking the final test so you have enough time less pressure to finish this test uh so uh, that's that's number one the 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 deadline for this uh, cohort is 31st august so you need to finish the tests before that and the fees is 1 lakh i just wanted to also clarify that uh, this is 1 lakh per semester and we also have tie ups with a lot of uh uh banking and financial partners where we can offer student loans to bring uh, where you can start paying after you start earning as well so that options are also available so once you register you can talk to one of our counselors and see what suits you the best uh partiban wants to know which are the universities that you have tied up with for this uh, program so the kalvium program that we are talking about in coimbatore uh, is currently stand alone it's just us who are offering this no other university offers that uh, in tamil nadu so yeah in in coimbatore it's just us uh, there is one more the couple of more universities we have tied up with for this academic year in case you are interested uh, we you can you can uh, you can join the same program through uh, lpu university in punjab but uh, in tamil nadu uh, in the south of india we are the only one kalviam coimbatore is the only place you get all of this right now uh mr amar asked and couple of other people are asking like you spoke about making mistakes in coding uh yeah. they want to know how can they work on their logical reasoning uh sure uh, so this question is probably uh, you know a little bit vague uh, because there are many aspects of uh, logical reasoning i would recommend uh, you know you to practice uh, uh, which which is going to make you better uh but i don't believe in the standard iq tests and uh, what not so uh, i don't think there is a, a standard answer to this question other than spend time and get better um, look at different uh, problem solving challenges you're you're eventually going to get better at it uh, 
if if Deepak wants to add anything, uh, please go ahead. I, I I I kind of agree because I don't believe that people are born with a certain IQ or something is given. Uh, I think we are all very very plastic brained uh, human beings, so we can definitely pick up skills. Uh, so just do variety of. I, I think for logic, it's logic depends on the context. So just un, try to solve a lot of things, lot of problems in different contexts, like you know mathematical problems, uh, logical problems, uh, real world problems. Right? You know, if if you're standing in a queue in a supermarket. If you can think about how can this queue be faster, if a boat standing there, how could they arrange it so that it could be faster? It, there's so many things around us, right? Every day, uh, if you start thinking about it logically, you will find a lot of lot of interesting problems to solve. So just just switch that uh, antenna on, I guess. Yeah. Uh, can uh, can we take a small break and take a another uh, poll, very quick poll? Now that we are almost an hour into this. Uh, one quick poll. Uh, right, but uh, before that, I just wanted to tell you some people want to know a little more. Maybe they didn't get, catch it that whether Kalviam is a college and mm -hmm. whether the degree you offer will help them to go abroad. Or is Absolutely. it that okay. you Let me answer that before the poll. Then I think that'll uh, get get the poll uh, results changed as well. So uh, Kalviam is a college. It is a place where you learn. Uh, it's a physical place. Now the college in Coimbatore is uh, in the Palakkad main road in the same campus as the Narayana Guru uh, College for uh, Management Studies. It's, it's, it's within the same campus. That's where the Kalviam campus is. Uh, this is part of the KCT campus there. So it's in Palakkad main road. That's where we are. It's a college. It's a physical college. All the, the way we thought the pedagogy, the teaching and all will be in person. Your mentors are going to be there with you on campus, in person, teaching you how to code. You'll be uh, learning in smaller groups of 20, 22 people, uh, not, not 100 people into a big theater room and being lectured one way. So it will be collaborative. And uh, the whole setup is going to be modern, like your future workplace. And uh, yes, uh, along with, uh, as, you, as you join Calvium, you also are automatically enrolled by us uh, for an for a degree in uh, computer applications from Mysore University that degree you would you would be able to finish it online at your convenience and that will help you go abroad as well so you will have the skills you will have a degree and you will already have work experience all the three things which are critical if you want to go abroad for work or for higher studies for everything so yeah that's that's the system so and is that poll over uh, you've done yeah, I, do you have more questions for the polling for the poll you are doing yes actually i would like to run the first poll again because we we wanted to know what people thought was interesting important for taking computer science now that they have heard us like to know their ranking now what they think is important for choosing computer science okay so meanwhile amar there's one important question from sandeep kumar kajal he says if it is offering large employment opportunities the number of students joining CSE slash IT is even larger. So won't it further increase demand supply gap and crash the packages down? Won't joining some other branch uh, offer less competition and more chances of getting a job? Okay, uh, so Sandeep, uh, let me let me try to break it down into its parts, right? What you're asking is one, is there enough demand so that this, this field can keep this sustaining? And second, should I go to a place where there is lesser competition so that maybe, you know, uh, I have more security over the long term? Uh, the answer to the first question is, uh, I mean, we, we spoke about the numbers earlier, right? Uh, there, is, there is plenty of demand, right? The world is moving into a digital avenue. The smartphones are the delivery mechanism for every product. Um, not just, uh, you know, the fields which were there earlier. A lot of fields are becoming more and more digital. So there's going to be plenty of demand, right? There is there is absolutely no shortage of demand. In fact, uh, people are changing the way, uh, you know, uh, computer science graduates are coming into the industry. Um, so don't worry about demand for computer science engineers coming down anytime soon. In fact, it is, it is uh, increasing year on year. And people have been saying this for the past decade. So uh, don't worry about it. That, that would be the answer to the first question. The second question 
is should I choose a field uh, which has less competition? Uh, it, it's a it's a personal choice, right? Uh, I mean, I I wouldn't want to uh, choose say computer science between uh, becoming a lawyer, for instance, uh, because the world needs less lawyers. There is absolutely great competition in the legal space. Also, you have to understand that the best in every segment are going to be disproportionately in demand, right? So uh, don't don't think that by choosing a sector which is of lower demand now is going to be uh, advantageous. There is going to be competition everywhere. Uh, picking a field basis demand right now in the job market is not a great strategy because that is bound to change. And the other thing is within that sector, uh, the top people or the top graduates uh, uh, are, are always going to be disproportionately in demand. So to summarize, yeah, so to summarize, don't worry about uh, choosing computer science. Absolutely go for it. Uh, second one, it's more of a personal choice. You need to decide, uh, you know, what, what your inclination or what your interests are. So there's a supplementary question, like, you know, how to weigh your options. Somebody, one parent is saying, my daughter is in 12th standard and wants to go for B.Tech computer science. But mm -hmm. the options like data science and AI are also yeah. there. So what do you suggest as the best options? Uh, don't worry about specialization. Uh, you're too young um, and too early in your career to specialize. Uh, I proudly call myself a generalist after uh, 15 years in the industry, right? So don't worry about uh, specializing in say data or AI or other keywords that people tell you. Uh, focus on your foundation, uh, get your basics right. Uh, get a peer group, which is, uh, you know, kind of pushes you to push your, uh, push your boundaries, right? Improve the peer group that you're associated with. Uh, and these are the ingredients uh, to become a better engineer. As for parents who are worried about uh, what field they're choosing, um, I guess most youngsters are going to take time to figure that out. They wouldn't know. And making that choice for them now is probably not a uh, great uh, way to you know decide their career. They will figure it out. So give them a uh, choice. Uh, the more uh, opportunity there is to specialize later on, uh, the more likely that they will end up enjoying and become good at something. So give them time, give them space. At the same time, set the expectation high. Uh, you know, all of this together should uh, make it right for uh, any any young aspiring engineer. Right. Thank you. So I think we'll wind up with one final question for you, uh, Mr. Deepak. Uh, I, our parents want to know to which university Calvium is affiliated and whether you also have any add-on programs. Uh, I'm not sure what he means by add-on programs. And that's the question which says maybe he means okay. that you're just offering this one single degree course or you have... Okay. Got it. Got that, it. So two yeah. things. I'll just answer the first one. Uh, so Calvium per se is uh, is a college. It is it is not a, the the program that we teach is not affiliated to any university. So we have university partners, but Calvium is not. Uh, that said, the degree that you get from here is this BCA degree uh, from uh, University of Mysore. So this is an add on degree that you get as a part of this course. But but the the course, the teaching, the pedagogy, the work integrated system. Uh, is industry recognized. It's not uh, university based. So we are very firmly work integrated in that sense. Uh, that said, uh, so that that that's the answer to the first question. To the second question, uh, we don't have any add-on. So if you say that, can I pursue Calvium while I'm doing, say, BTEC somewhere else or BSc somewhere else? No, you can't because this is a full-time program. Uh, remember that you will be studying in the morning, working in the evening, so in the afternoon. So it's it's uh, in itself uh, quite comprehensive. So it's a full time program. You have to spend four years here to get the benefits that uh, this program offers. So we don't have add on uh, options here. Right. Yes. So with that I think we'll close our discussion. And uh, I mean I would again like to reiterate that when it is of course college admission time, parents do tend to invest a lot of money to secure the future of their child. 
and students also join various degree programs with a lot of aspirations. So our approach to education should not let either of them down. And what we heard our industry experts talk about today has made it very clear that simply knowing something is not enough. And as you said, Mr. Deepak, learning by, learning by doing is the need of the hour. So all our participants who joined today, choose your institutions judiciously. And as the Calviam logo says, liberate the engineer in you with the right dose of academic knowledge and practical skills. So I would like to thank Mr. Deepak, Mr. Amar, Mr. Abhilash for their valuable inputs and insights and our audience for enlivening this session with their suggestions and questions on the relevance of computer science engineering. Uh, thank you for joining this web webinar brought to you by the Hindu Education Plus presented by Kalbium. Thank you all of you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, please visit our website. We have a phone number if you want to know more. Uh, you can just call us and we'll get in touch with you. You can email us and let your queries keep coming. I think uh, Soma's team and the Hindu team also, thank you so much for bringing this together. And uh, we'll, we'll pick up the queries from them and probably answer all of you individually. Yeah, sure. I think that would be nice. Thank you. Thank you once again. Yeah. Thank you, Soma. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Thank you. See you. Thank you.